Hi, I'm James Brown from ShenmueDojo.com. Hi, I'm Matt Oliver from ShenmueDojo.com. And you're listening to the Sega Lounge. Welcome to the Sega Lounge, a podcast dedicated to our love for all things Sega, be it the games, the music, or the community. I'm KC. In each episode, I'll be talking to different guests and sharing their projects and their passion for Sega. Hello there. Welcome. This is the Sega Lounge, the place to be when it comes to Sega talk. I'm so glad you could join me for another episode. I hope you've been doing well despite the current situation. I know a lot of us haven't been feeling that great lately, so this is an important reminder to all of you. Mental health isn't to be taken lightly. So if you're going through a rough time, mentally or emotionally, please take a breather, take a break from social media and other online stuff, and just take a step back, regroup, and come back stronger afterwards. This week's show is all about Shenmue, and as I was talking to this week's guests, and thinking about my own experience with the first two games and how important they were to me as a young person, I also thought about how crazy things are right now and how we should all take care of our mental health. Certain games and other forms of entertainment can help with that, of course, maybe even Shenmue. But whatever is happening, don't be too hard on yourself. I appreciate you, so take care of yourself. That was certainly deeper than usual, wasn't it? Shall we move on to this week's guests? We shall. This week, I'm incredibly honored to be joined by the current co-owners of Shenmue Dojo, the most prominent online resource for Shenmue news, info and more, and also the most active community. The dojo turned 20 years old earlier this month, which is in and of itself an achievement. But when you add to that the importance of its community, and others of course, to the evolution of the Shenmue series, it's an even bigger deal. I've had the pleasure of sitting down with James Brown, aka Skill Jim, and Matt Oliver, and what follows is a longer than usual episode of the Sega Lounge, but also one that was certainly a pleasure to record as it's not very often that I get to have fellow Shenmue enthusiasts on the show. They also address the ongoing, yet already funded Kickstarter project for Shenmue World, a fan-made magazine focused on Shenmue. I hope you enjoyed listening to this as much as I enjoyed recording it. Hey guys, welcome to the Sega Lounge. Hi James, hi Matt, how are you? Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? Are you all good? You? Yeah, doing great. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on the show. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's an honor. It's, oh, it's my honor, really. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on the show. A long over, overdue interview and, and chat with you guys. So we'll we'll talk about your projects in a little bit. So yeah, sure. let's start with some, you know, personal stuff like social security number, <laughs> uh, bank, bank account details. <laughs> <Don't even laughs> You can have them, but there's no money. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's all on Shenmue merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the life of a Shenmue fan. Yeah. <laughs> the true story of a Shenmue fan. Okay, James, let's start with you. James okay. Brown, How welcome to the show. Doing yep. great. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your history with video games and more specifically with Shenmue as well? Yeah, sure. So... um well, I've been a, a Sega fan from when I was very young, to be honest. Um, my first console was a Mega Drive, and um, my memory is shocking, but just remember seeing games like Sonic the Hedgehog and um, those type of games, you know, Dynamite Heady and stuff as a kid, and, you know, Sega was really appealing to me as a child, and um, obviously I had a say in which side of the, the coin I, I, I was going to go, and I went Sega, and then um, got a, a Game Gear shortly after, um, 
And I was one of those <laughs> kids that would uh, stay up at 2 a.m. trying to tune the, the TV tuner or the Game Gear in and trying to watch <laughs> something. <laughs> um, well, I should be sleeping to, to go to school the next day kind of thing. And and then um, Meg CD I had next. And um, then the Sega Saturn, which I can't remember if I had at launch. Uh, I just remember picking one up from... Um, I think it was like even a random game store. It wasn't like my own local game store. It was just a random game store. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember they had, um, I don't know if it was just, just that kind of era, but they had like a, a printed sheet rather than, you know, like you'd get a, like a leaflet or an advert on the wall of like, you know, coming soon, the satin. This was like yeah. a black and white printout and it had the bundles on. So it had like Sega satin and the games that came with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously the price and stuff. And I, I remember I got Sega Rally um, Virtua Fighter. I think it came with, for some reason, I think it came with Virtua Fighter 1 and 2 um, and as part of this bundle. And then moving on after that, obviously the Dreamcast. And then um, subsequently Shemu. Um, I mean, I, I can tell you, first experiences with the Dreamcast, um, I used to... There's a, there's a place near to where I live called Festival Park, and it's like a place where there's a, a bowling alley, a cinema, um, like a light, a laser laser gun sort of place. But that one's shut down now, but the, the others are still there. And there was a snooker place, and my, my dad's like a part of a, a snooker team. And we used to go like every oh. Tuesday night, and um, I'd go with him, and he'd give me like £10, and then I'd go down into the the cinema or the bowling place, which is like kind of where we had our arcade machines back in those mm-hmm. days. We didn't really have like a, a standalone arcade place where there was just, you know, loads of arcade machines. They were, they were usually part of like a cinema. They'd be like a little section of the cinema or a little section of the, the bowling alley area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I used to spend, you know, 10 pound in 20 minutes <laughs> and then go back up <laughs> to him and, you know, try and get some more money. But one time I went down and this is like, um, Dreamcast came out in 2000, didn't it, for us? So it must have been probably mid-2000. Uh, I went in, I, I went into the cinema and there was like one lone Dreamcast kiosk just sitting there and no one was on it for some reason. I, ju- I just went over and I must have hogged it the whole night playing the same stages of Sonic Adventure because there was like a built-in demo disc and it had Sonic Adventure uh, demo of Ready to Rumble Boxing yeah, and, uh, that was my first experience with the Dreamcast, and then since then, obviously, I collected the the official Dreamcast magazines, and you know, just y- your mind, you know, went crazy for just waiting for this console to be released, and then we picked it up on the the launch day uh, from a game store that was my local game store at that time, and uh, I remember picking up Virtua Fighter Three, um, Blue Stinger, Sonic Venture, Power Stone. And I think there was another game because I remember having five games, but I can't quite remember the launch, launch titles um, that well. But um, I remember the guy was saying to me, if you want to return Blue Stinger, you know you can. <laughs> so he was, he was like, he was trying to concede in my head that I wasn't going to like Blue Stinger for some reason. And then I took it home and I was playing Blue Stinger and I was like, you know, this isn't a very good game. <laughs> He's like, he had to concede. So I took it back and then we swapped it for Sega Rally 2. Oh, good okay. choice. Yeah. But, and obviously since then, uh, I do quite like Blue Singer. I've I've repicked it up, and it's a it is a good game. But he just he just planted the seed in my head. I was like, this is going to be a- yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's it. And then obviously just eagerly awaiting Shemu, which I got on Christmas Day of the mm-hmm. year it came out. So I think it came out in November. I might be wrong on that. Uh, sometime in November in in the UK anyway. And uh, mm-hmm. I had to wait till Christmas Day, and then I had to wait a little bit longer because obviously we were doing like family stuff. But I do, I do remember going on Shemu for like about twenty minutes and just going through the intro, walking around Rio's room a little bit, going in the drawers before I had to turn it off for Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I didn't get the chance to play it until that evening. But then after that, my life changed basically, mm-hmm. and uh, everything that's happened since then has been because of Shemu and. Uh, I think it's changed me as a person, and uh, you know some of, some of the mentality that I, I took from that game, some of the the emotion, and uh, what Yu Suzuki put into that game, 
um you know i th- i think i'm not the only person that can can say this sort of stuff i think it, it's changed quite a lot of people's lives really for the better for sure yeah excellent excellent mm. Thank you, James. No problem. What about you, Matt? Welcome as well. Thank you for having me. Um, I don't quite know how I follow James on that one, <laughs> um, but I'll do my best. Um, well, I blame my dad, actually, for getting into gaming. Um, we I remember being, I must have been about four or five, and he took us to Toys R Us in, I, I live on the outskirts of Oxford, and he took us into Oxford. And he said to me, right, I'm going to get your games console. What do you want? And there was the Super Nintendo and there was the Mega Drive. And I remember vividly seeing Sonic the Hedgehog running on the demo kiosk. And I was captivated by the color and the speed. And I was like, I want that. And the the, the side of the coin I went on was literally because of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was, and when I look back now, when you think about how they marketed it, it was perfect. It did exactly what it said on the tin, and it was fantastic. So I started on the Mega Drive, got Sonic the Hedgehog. I got the double header pack um, with um, John Madden American Football and the NHL Hockey, which I spent hours and hours on. <laughs> and that, that's where it started. Um, I then moved into the Sega Saturn, and we picked one up, I think it was just after launch. I can't quite remember, but I remember my dad's friend coming over with one about a week before we got it. And he brought it over. Um, my dad at the time was quite into his gaming as well. So he was like, that's it, I'm getting one. <laughs> so I remember vividly driving down to the same Toys R Us a few years later and picking up the Sega Saturn um, just after launch. And we got Virtual Fighter 2. We got Sega Rally, which um, was a very competitive game in our household, trying to get the fastest lap times on the desert stage. That definitely caused a few family feuds here or there. <laughs> which was quite quite <laughs> interesting for a 10-year-old boy to be beating his dad who's in his 30s. <laughs> I don't think he took it very well, but there we go. Um, <laughs> but that, and then sort of moving on to that, for me personally, because when I got the Dreamcast, it was the first console I'd asked, really asked for, and I had an awareness of gaming. So I first became aware of the Dreamcast in the Sega Saturn magazines where we used to get in the UK every month. And I remember them talking about the new Sega console coming out and showing sort of clips of Sonic Adventure and various other games at the time. I remember just looking at it and go, yeah, it was night and day above anything else that was available at the time. I remember looking at the PlayStation thinking, you know, it's completely above that. The N64, which I had and I loved, I just remember thinking, wow, this console, it it was almost in my head, it it captivated my imagination, if you like. Mm -hmm. So I, I picked it up. The Christmas of launch, we got quite lucky that we managed to get one um, for Christmas. And I got Sonic Adventure. Um, we got Soul Calibur just afterwards. We had Sega Rally 2. I remember those those three games. And I remember sitting there playing, playing Sonic Adventure and experiencing Sonic in 3D for the first time was 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 an experience I'll never forget, actually. I remember as a kid just yeah. spending hours and hours. It was Christmas Day. And apart from Christmas dinner, you didn't see me. That I was, I was in my bedroom, hooked it up to the TV, and I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog, and they were without a care in the world. And it's one of the fondest memories I have in gaming, actually, barring sort of Shenmue, which I'll come on to in a second. So we picked, I just picked up other games like Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, all of those sort of classic titles. But my involvement with Shenmue is very different to James's, in that I hadn't heard about it until a friend at school told me. So I remember being sat in our form group and the guy who's called Sam actually came in to me and he said, Matt, you've got to look at this game. You've got to look at this game. And I was like, what what is it? What is it? So he showed me in the Dreamcast magazine. And I remember just seeing the presentation of Shenmue and I was like, whoa, it blew everything I'd seen out of the water. And when I think back, you're comparing sort of Final Fantasy VII, uh, Legend of Zelda, and this stood as like, yeah, hang on a second, there's been nothing like this. I have to have this game. So I picked it up for my birthday, actually, just after the launch. I had my birthday, 2nd of January. So I got it for my birthday that, that year. And that it changed my view on gaming. It changed everything in terms of the way I look at games. It influenced the games I play. It just it, it was something else. The world, it felt real. It was immersive. 
you were drawn into it and no game had ever done that before for me and i think that's why it captured such a such a firm place in my heart actually i think because it was so new it was so real and it was so immersive and i i deeply cared about the story and the characters especially at the age of 14 um yeah it just had a massive influence on me and then was shown me two coming out later on that sort of in 2001 i'd gone through a difficult period with my dad being ill as well and i i think shenmue for me was it was a it was a safe space it was a world away from everything else that i could lose myself i could sit i could enjoy and i could just immerse myself in the game in the character in the music and and I mean, there's a passion that's been held ever since, if I'm honest. And it's something that really, I'm thinking back to it now, really resonates with me. Mm. I, I agree. Mm. I, th- I think it it hit that sort of, like you were saying, like we were f- 14 years old. It was like, it just came at the right time. Um, and it was something that no one had ever seen before. You know, like I was saying, the, the graphics really drew you in from the get-go. And then for it to be... An amazing game on top of that is you know it's insane really that the, the story um invokes such deep you know emotions and yeah uh, especially for a 14 year old who's not you're not used to that so like say like your sonic adventure where it's like oh it's fast paced it's awesome it's you know it's cool and then shenmue on the other hand is like it's mallow it's slow it's it's methodical and you know and going into a game like that is completely unexpected and um, I just think it's just hit the right note for for capturing people's imaginations at that age. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. I'd absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. I think the timing of it was perfect. And I think in contrast to what was on offer at the Dreamcast at the time, in terms of they had some real classic arcade titles on there, Yeah, it was, yeah. it was so different to what was on offer, not just, I think, on Dreamcast, but across gaming. I think that's where it captivated that real passionate audience if you like hmm. i think none of us had ever played anything like it at the time so Not and, at all. And that's what, yeah. what makes it interesting because um thinking about i was thinking about this the other day as well uh it wasn't like me to play a game like that at all at the time i was a little bit older so i was uh 17 when when i got the game which was in 2001 mm-hmm. uh so later the first game and um and I, thinking back, I I was all over the Sonic Adventures, the Jet Set Radios, the Crazy Taxis, the all the crazy fast paced games with uh, crazy, you know, colorful graphics, yeah, crazy music, Sega arcade, yeah, proper right? classic Sega, exactly. So, yeah. and then and then you 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 take a look at Chenmu and what it offered you at the time, and you know, even the music was. You know, it was slower. Mm. It was like darker at times as well, uh, more somber. the The whole ambience of the game was different. So, looking back now, I wonder how I enjoyed that because it was really my style of game. I think because so, it was so different, though, that's why you enjoyed it because it really, yeah. it, you know, it took you back. Because, like you say, you you listening to Sonic Adventure soundtrack or Crazy Taxi, and it's like fast paced rock kind of music and then like I, i'd never been into like classical music but any piece of shamu like certain pieces make the hair stand on you stand on its yeah. end it's you know it's oh, for sure it is crazy the kind of like i say emotions it just evokes in mm-hmm. <laughs> within <laughs> without yes. sounding too cheesy but it's you know it it does it's weird let, let's sound cheesy though it's a work of art Definitely, <laughs> it is yeah. absolutely it's that perfect package of presentation music and a story mm-hmm. that you can that the game makes you relate to and i think that's why it's such a passionate game for the fan base that are out there now because it strikes all those chords and it does it brilliantly in my opinion and it's mind blowing some of the stuff that you still we're still finding today, which is like twenty years later. Like there was that that recent discovery of Nozomi being able to fight in the park, or yeah, you know, there's there's some crazy things that like are, are still in the code somewhere, still in the game that people are only just finding. It's because it's that deep and that well thought out that it, it's just a testament to gaming. Really, it's it's 
it's it's a crazy experience it is it is indeed okay great 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 stuff there um so we already heard about your first impressions mm -hmm. you were clearly blown away by the game so was i so was i uh, and then what what happened with me was when i finished the first game i had to go you know, run to the store and get Shenmue 2 as well, which was already available at the time because I was hooked. That's so cool. I'm guessing you got the second game almost, you know, at launch, perhaps? From memory, yeah. I mean, it was something that, you, like I say, you, you carry on reading about in the official Dreamcast magazines. And I remember actually being quite surprised it was releasing so soon after the first game. I think it was like a year later in, in, in the UK. And mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it's 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 something that you had to get after the first game. You had to find out what was going to happen next in the story. Um, and I remember actually being a little bit disappointed at the start because I I didn't know going in that it was going to be in Japanese with English subtitles. So I was like looking through the oh, menus, yeah. looking in the options, and I'm like, I'm sure there should be an option to, to put the uh, the English voices on. So uh, that was another thing then as. I don't know if I was still 14 or 15 at this point. Another thing to get used to, because I'd never played a game that was fully in Japanese. So I'm hearing the language kind of for the first time. And um, that was, you know, that was an experience in itself, really. It's funny, mm -hmm. it's funny James, how you mentioned, obviously, you wanted to continue the story. And yep. a little fun fact of mine is, actually, I didn't know there was going to be a Shenmue 2, uh, which sounds really ironic now that... We, we co-own the Dojo, but I, I honestly didn't know. So when I played Shenmue 1 and I got to the end of, you know, when he goes off on the boat to Hong Kong and it rolled the credits, so I was like, hang on a second, what's this? What's going on? <laughs> but then... That's quick, the end of the story. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I say a quick Google. A you quick, never know what happened. <laughs> a quick, well, I say quick because we had dial-up internet back then, but a look on the internet and I was Googling Shenmue 2. And it, I, I got obviously found out it was coming out later later in two thousand and one, so it was a launch ask, day. That'd be Ask Jeeves back then, probably. Oh, <laughs> Ask Jeeves, yeah, that's a yeah. throwback, isn't it? But I remember getting Shenmue two. I got it. It was due out on the Friday, and I bunked my paper around to play it. <laughs> I, I can't I, believe I, you can remember the day it came out, Friday. Okay. <laughs> And I, I remember it well, and I remember sitting there, think, phoning in sick for my paper round because Shenmue 2 had turned up, and I was like, I am playing this, and I'm not stopping until I am told to stop, and even then I'll probably ignore you. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it, it, it was, I had, I had to play it. I absolutely had to play Shenmue 2, and what that game did was it just expanded on the first game in every way, and it, I mean, for me, it's my favourite. I know that's a divisive opinion between the fan base. But for me, it just it hit every note that at Shenmue 2. It really, really did. And and when it all ended, and obviously there was the the massive, massive gap between Shenmue 2 and 3, that, that, that need of, I want to know what happened next, it never went away. And I think that's testament to how well that, the, the series was put together in terms of its storytelling and in terms of the way it captivates people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And that sure. rubbed off on the fans as well, because, you know, we, we've all waited patiently for 15 years until Shenmue 3 was announced. And if anything, it's probably a little bit ironic, actually, that it was probably Shenmue that taught you to be patient, like that patient because of the type of game that it was. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> being able to wait for 15 years and, you know, all the fan base coming together, uh, you know to show such passion like that i can't i can't say there's anything or any other game series that could be gone for that long and still have that that same desire same sort of passion behind it because i know yeah. we've had like you know gaps between you know even like streets of rage 3 and 4 but i don't think there was like an outcry for streets of rage 4 whereas well obviously because shambu has got that story that you want to find that story to, yeah it's not it. exactly the same thing the exactly. world building yeah. yeah and where it left obviously at the end of Shenmue 2 is like how can you yeah. not tell us what's going to happen next kind of thing so <laughs> yes yes so that's actually a pretty good segue into my next question which was uh how uh did you react to the kickstarter announcement for Shenmue 3 
Do you remember? Did you watch that live? Did I you watch it, the? Yeah, the, I watched it as well. Yeah. I, I okay. remember staying up and watching that overnight. Was wow. it two AM or four AM? I can't it, remember. Two AM, I think. Two AM, yeah, I think it was. And AM, we stayed yeah. up, and I remember as it was going through the show, being disappointed that it hadn't nothing had happened yet because obviously Yu Suzuki teased the the forklift tweet, so we were already uh-huh. on the Shamu Dojo forums chatting, like you know. Is, is he hinting at something? Is there something going to happen? Um, I think there was even like um, I don't know if we've, I don't think we've still got it, but there was like um, uh, a chat room sort of box at the bottom of the forums, and people were using the chat room for like live messaging. And um, obviously, we, we were watching the thing, and I'd actually um, I'd made a bit of a bed in the room that I was in because obviously I got it on the computer screen and I had to stay up till two a.m. Um, you know, and I was full time work, so I'd made a, a pillow on the floor, and I think I just slept until the thing started. I set an alarm to get up at two o'clock so I could watch the E three conference, and then obviously that devolved the digital section, and then you just you just knew like everyone like the Michael Huber reaction as soon as you hear that first note that you know it was perfect, it was beautiful. Yes, that yeah. That they used yeah. that note to to kick off the announcement with, and as soon as you heard that, you know your heart stops beating and. Um, you know, start, it started tearing up a bit and my body was shaking and, you yeah. know, yeah. and every, everyone else was asleep. My wife was asleep. So, I, I, you know, I, I kind of, I, I don't, I think I let out like a, a bit of a yell, <laughs> but not, okay. enough, not enough Same to wake up. And then I, when I got in bed at like 4 a.m. or whatever, then I, I kind of like nudged her and said, you're never going to guess what's what's just happened kind of thing. Not that she was bothered, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I was actually I was actually watching the trying to watch the whole thing. Uh, I actually I, I I lie down on the couch, and I was almost asleep. You know, kind of kind of almost asleep. And then, like you said, when the first notes of the music came on, I was I instantly got up, <laughs> and I said no, no, but really really loud. And then when I realized it was a real thing, I said, yes. And my wife, you know, woke up <laughs> and came onto the living room. What's happening? Shenmue 3 is happening. What's that? I don't care. Let me sleep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's one of the fondest memories I'll ever have in gaming. Yeah, same. Oh, for sure. It really, sure. really is. When you think back to it and... E3 after E3 after E3 went and there was nothing. There was teases, there was fake rumors, there was everything and above it. And the moment that first note hit was, for me, it, was, it, it felt so good. Mm. It felt <laughs> so good to go, it's happening. And I, I went to bed afterward. Well, I say I went to bed. I backed the Kickstarter as soon as I could. When, when it came back online after they broke it. And I woke up the next morning, sort of 10, 11 o'clock, and my phone was full of messages from my friends. Do you know what's been going on? Do you know what's been going on? Of course I know what's been going on. I've been up all night. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't sleep. It's kind of it's good, actually, that it was like it's kind of the, the YouTube era of stuff because you can actually go on YouTube and see people's reactions and kind of relive those memories a little bit, can't you? You can go back and you know, watch Michael Huber react the way he does. And it kind of like, it takes you back to that moment. It does. And I think his reaction was pretty much all of our reactions molded into one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was. yeah. That suspension of disbelief and all and the realization, no, this is, this is happening. This is real. Shenmue 3 yeah. is happening. It's like, wow. Whoa. <laughs> I can't, words don't express it. <laughs> I couldn't do it justice if I'm honest. It's crazy as well. If you watch that reaction, like the full video, he goes for about 10 or 15 minutes after just shaking and sobbing a little bit. It's <laughs> it's it's surreal how it can affect, you know, it's just because of the, the 15 year gap and then yeah. something that you don't ever expect to happen because we we just yeah. crossed it out of our minds at that point you, you you've told yourself That's it's it. never going to happen, you know, if it was going to happen. Even if you, by now. I, I don't think we, we ever admitted it. You know, but we we weren't expecting it. I I, yeah, I wasn't so. expecting it. I don't know. It, even the the you mentioned the forklift tease. Mm. I didn't think that was a you know any had anything to do with 
any kind of announcement. Yeah, anything. you thought he was like just Yu Suzuki is actually there, but he's just seen a, a forklift and he thought it was a, a nice thing to tweet out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he's teasing the fans and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's it's just another unrelated tease. Uh, but so I, I was, but I I I think I still had a, a, a little shred of hope. That's I why I was it. watching it the conference. And not sleeping at the time. So yeah. but 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 still it was pretty, you know, unbelievable. Pretty unbelievable. And since that E three I've I've stayed up to watch all of them. I don't was that like one of the first yeah. ones that was streamed live? Because it's the it's one of the first I actually remember. It's the first I stayed up for. to watch. And, yeah. And the reason was that forklift tweet. I wouldn't have stayed up otherwise. <laughs> I would it, have watched did, the, the, really thing, the day that. before the day after. Yeah. Yeah, that tweet really did help. You know, get people uh-huh. praying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Indeed. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Great memories. Mm. <laughs> amazing. I'd amazing. Okay. Again. Just yeah. It all again. I'd, I'd love to bottle it and sell it because the, the, the feeling's something else. Mm. <laughs> and so, very quickly, and you guys were talking about this before we we started recording. I know. Okay. Reactions to Shenmue Three. Um. Yeah, well, from my point of view, mm. I really enjoyed the game. I um, I think it did the best it could do um, trying to recreate that Shenmue experience. So, you know, the game actually feels like Shenmue, where you can interact with the NPCs and they've all got different dialogue each time you go back to them. You know, they, they really tried to recreate that Shenmue engine that obviously they, they weren't able to use. They had to rebuild the engine from the ground up and I think they did a really good job. They, there was just a few things, obviously, that could have took it from a good game to a great game, and I think we all agree that there was a little bit of story lacking, or you know that some of the story beats were um, a bit unusual. Actually, I thought like uh, I remember the first kind of thing I was a little bit disappointed about was when Rio meets Chai in Bailu Village, and it's like. As, as you know, you expect him to say like, "How are you still alive?" or you know, have a bit more yeah. of a reaction. Whereas he sees uh-huh. him, and it's like you know, it's, it's like he's never seen him before. It, it was it was a bit weird. Uh, I think mm-hmm. we could have could have worked on elements like that a little bit. Yeah, you, yeah. And it kind of felt like he'd just been shoehorned back into the series, kind of because the fans wanted Chai to come back, kind of thing going. And I feel like they did do a little, of quite maybe too much fan service, if anything. Um, but obviously, it's a celebration of Shenmue and the fan base that brought it back to life. So, you know, that that's why I th- I would, and I've I've spoken to you about this, Matt. That mm. I just think they've they've created the groundwork for Shenmue Four, and when they get into the production and the you know building Shenmue Four, they've got the tools. They don't have to build the engine again. They can just carry carry that forward, create the environments, the characters, and then put more of the time and effort into the story and um you know maybe upgrade the combat a little bit and those are the only things that really the game was lacking in, in my opinion otherwise it was a, a very solid game and i'd i'd, I'd, I'd probably echo everything that james is saying actually i think as a overall experience it felt like shenmue yeah. and i think to quote Ryan Payton, who I've ma- I managed to speak to in my work for the dojo it is a miracle that this game even exists <laughs> and and while while it does have its flaws, absolutely, I think the story beats are lacking in some parts. I think the combat system, while it's serviceable, I think it does it needs a bit of refinement here or there, and I think they recognise that as well. Um, but what they've managed to achieve on what they had, considering it was an engine they had never used before on a on a platform that you know at the time was still relatively new. I think they to get what they did out of it was a really good job and it lays the groundwork for Shenmue 4 because they can spend the time on those story beats. They can spend the time developing those characters, developing those systems more and really solidifying that experience. For me, it almost felt like Shenmue 3 was a proof of concept. This is what we can do on next to nothing. Yeah. Let us build on mm-hmm. this. Let, let, let us build on the story. Let us build this world let us build off this solid foundation and we'll blow you away and that's that's how it feels to me i think if or when in my opinion shenmue 4 happens i think we're going to be in for a treat because they're not going to have to sit 
and rebuild everything from scratch. They can put the time and the effort in into the things that matter in terms of the story, in terms of the combat system. And I think, James, again, you've touched on it in terms of they won't need to do a fan service anymore. And one, obviously, the Kickstarter was a rip-roaring success, as we know. But that with that comes certain expectations, I think, around a Kickstarter in terms of rewards, in terms of how much of a nod do you have to the fans? And they're not going to be burdened by that anymore. Yu Suzuki can make what he wants. And he... Yeah. he it sounds inconsiderate of the fan base and it, it's not me being inconsiderate, but I think he can go into his bubble and he can make the game that he wants without having to consider the fan service, the Kickstarter and everything that's gone behind it to get him to the point of even to be able to develop the game. Let him, and For me, it's now a case of let's see what he can do with what he's got. Let's build on what's there. And I think we can really push on from there. If anything, it kind of echoes the Shemu 1, Shemu 2 formula, where Shemu 1's quite a, a subtle sort of experience. And, you know, if you if you really dig deep back into the, the story elements of Shemu 1, not a lot happens actually throughout the game. Mm. It, it's only when you get both yeah. games together, like Shemu 1 and Shemu 2, that that experience as a whole, you know, it's, it takes it from. 10 to 11 it's like it's mind-blowing really because how much stuff actually happens in Shenmue 2 and it introduces all these different elements like you know as fans we were we were wondering like what's going to happen because of all the magical kind of elements that were happening towards the end of the game which kind of like you know just completely flip switch on what mm-hmm. you're expecting up until that point you're expecting like a realistic and, and sort of experience and it's funny how people you know uh, i think matt uh, mentioned this before Many people consider Shenmue One to be the best game. Yeah, I, I, I would agree on said, that. As you just said, okay, and just as you said, nothing really, you know, not much happens in terms of story, right? So it doesn't advance that much when compared, like to to Shenmue Two. So yeah, um, but it but it works. Which, what what happens is great. So yeah, which is why I was well. I was trying to say uh, Shenmue Three. And then, you know, sub- subsequently Shenmue 4 could kind of build on that same sort of model where the story doesn't really progress too much in Shenmue 3, but it, may, it, it allowed Shenmue 2 to be completely mental. So, you know, you never know, Shenmue 4, it, it could it could be the game that, as a package, Shenmue 3 and Shenmue 4 together become what Shenmue 1 and Shenmue 2 were, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'd I'd agree with yeah. that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So, very quick final question about Shenmue Three. Mm-hmm. Not Shenmue Three. Shenmue Four. What will it take for Shenmue Four to happen? Oh, that's a million dollar <laughs> question. That is. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think. I mean, we go back to before the Kickstarter. The series was considered dead for all what intense purposes. It was considered dead. It was a Almost a running joke, yeah. Shenmue 3, it's never going to happen. Then it's happened. Uh-huh. Fast forward, we've got the game, it's been out a year. And in that time, we've had Shenmue 3, we've obviously just had the Steam release, we've got the anime coming, and we've had so much merchandise that my wallet is screaming at me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> my wallet died ages ago. <laughs> it's... So I think Shenmue 4, in the package, it's it's... I think it will happen. I think it can happen. And I think they're setting things up in terms of the anime, in terms of the merchandise, in terms of furthering the franchise as a whole to really appeal to that fan base. And the anime can expand out on that and capture people in. So it makes Shenmue 4 more viable. I think it will happen. I don't think it will be within the next couple of years. I think it will be more towards 2024 when we actually get a release. If I'm just, I'm just guessing here. But I would be surprised if it didn't happen because the series is in a far, far better place than it was. Especially with the anime, like you're saying, because you know that that can introduce fans to the series that perhaps wouldn't. Uh, you know, like I was saying to you previously, Matt, that you know if a new player to Shemu, you know. It's, wants to pick up the game now. That their, their, their mentality is, oh, this is a, a 1999 Dreamcast game. You know, why why should I play this? You know, you, you've got all these new new exciting experiences coming out. I just think the anime will allow those sort of players to catch up to where we are now, 
Uh, I think the first season is supposed to be um, all of Shenmue 1 and you know, part of Shenmue 2. So it'll be interesting to see like people's reactions to the anime series and the storyline, if they can catch up with the story and present it in a, a, you know, a really good, well-told, like the games. Um, and, and, and they could even you know, go prior to the start of Shenmue it's 1. It might be, yeah, it might be interesting yeah. to see like how Ryo you know, got his scar, for example, or his, his plaster on his face, you know, some, they, they could go into those sort of elements, his relationship with his dad, and then obviously tie in the, the missing boat chapter would be cool, chapter two. Um, yeah. So I, I'd, I'd be interested. Um, I mean, the anime series really appeals to me because um, I, I, I love the game that much. I just want to see, like, what they can actually do to retell the story. And uh, like I say, I think it'll, it'll only help the series grow uh, by picking up extra fans along the way who may be put off by, you know, a 20-year-old sort of game. Because to, to play Shemu 3, I know Yu Suzuki said that you could start at Shemu 3 if you want to, but ideally you, you need to play the first two games. And I know these like the Shemu the movie, which you could watch that if you wanted to, I suppose, and then play Shemu 2. I just think something like the anime is a little bit easier to digest. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the re-release or the release of the HD versions of Shenmue 1 and 2 also helped a little bit, but Definitely. I'm not sure, as you said, that it, it, for some people, it's like, a, as you said, a 1999 game uh, with uh, outdated controls, perhaps, for some, and yeah, mechanics. Tank controls. I, I still, yeah, I, I still think, but, you know, that's maybe nostalgia talking, but I, I still think it's, 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 it's a great game today, but you need to consider it uh, just from the eyes of a person who, yeah, and you need to to look at it from the eyes of a a person that were, was playing games in 1999 and considering what wasn't there at the time in the market. So it it was really a groundbreaking thing, a game, and and even the the premise of the you know you could talk to anyone, you could see everything, so. Yeah, I, I don't when you consider like, those things, you could appreciate it, even if you don't think it plays that well. But it, you should be able to appreciate. I it. I think the storytelling stands up today, quite quite honestly. I think it. Oh, for sure. I think it, it's even you look at modern games. Yes, obviously the controls aren't as smooth as modern games, and there are systems in there that will, of course, be outdated. But I think if you can get you can get past that and actually just delve into the game and get into what it was doing at the time. It, it it's it's still a fantastic experience for new players even even now and mm -hmm. I would I always recommend it to my friends they're probably fed up of me recommending it quite honestly <laughs> but <laughs> but it it can and and I think if you give it give it that just consideration of where it's come from and let it breathe I think it it, it can absolutely still appeal today and its storytelling is still up there with with the modern platforms now in my opinion. I think it still looks amazing as well. I mean, I don't like. I don't know if it's rose tinted glasses, but I look at Shenmue, and honestly, I'm still blown away by the graphics. Especially if people take into account, like you say, it's it's 20 years old and it looks that good. Um, it's some some of the the graphics to to me today it's look better than games that are releasing currently. To be honest, but like I say, that might just be rose tinted nostalgia goggles <laughs> but i don't know if you agree yeah, with that maybe maybe it is i i, I agree but i think it's mm. the nostalgia especially talking, like you, you, I you think. put up the <laughs> like the shemu passport disc and you're looking at the oh the, yeah the, those passport videos and and the the real-time graphics so you can move the camera around and change effect with the lighting with the stick so it's not like it's pre-rendered and that is the dreamcast making those graphics and I think that's that's pretty incredible. It was working very hard, mm. though, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, you can hear the I can hear the disc drive grinding. in my head right now. The grinding of that disc drive is it's, yep. is, is, is it's playing the passport. But yeah, you're right, absolutely. I think the graphics on the passport models, are, especially for the time and even now, they they they're lovely. Yeah, they're brilliant. They're what they got. Mm. What they got out of the Dreamcast is is mind blowing. Honestly, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, how our Dreamcast, uh, you know, survived that, I, I will never know. <laughs> Without exploding. <laughs> well, I'm on my third one, so clearly not very well. 
It's amazing, oh, really. They, they didn't even get hot, did they? I, my, my Dreamcast never really... You know, you touch your PlayStation, you can almost burn your hand. You know, the, oh, that's the Dreamcast. Yeah, that's a good point. Use, that's yeah. a good point. I don't yeah. know what it is about the those classic consoles, but they don't actually get that hot, do they? Like you say, you Saturn, you never touch your Saturn and go, ooh. No. <laughs> a PS4, <laughs> you know, if you, you, you yeah. brush it, you've got a scald mark. <laughs> My PS4 Pro sounded like it was taking off at times. So, mm. wow. Yes. Okay. So we've been talking for a, a while now. It's always a pleasure to have fellow Shenmue fans on the show, which doesn't happen that often these days. So that's why we, we got carried away. So it's time to take a quick break. I do. Um, I do. Uh, whenever you interview someone, I do like that you always try and drop Shemu in in your conversations. I think even last last episode when you were talking to, was it George? Yes, um, from, from the Sega yeah, shop. I, I know you 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 mentioned Shemu as like one of the brands that you could get off the store, and you you said the greatest game of all time. <laughs> Just like a passing always. comment. Yeah, exactly. always, my man. Always. <laughs> That's what you've got to do. And whenever I can. <laughs> People are fed up with that, but okay. I don't care. <laughs> it needs to be started. Okay. <laughs> I have no friends anymore. Uh, anyway, with that sad comment, uh, let's take a quick break. I'm going to cry a little bit, and then we'll come back with something different. Oh, no. Which, Ooh. yes, oh, no, James. Oh, no. Ooh. Yes, the Sega Lodge challenge is coming. Oh, no. Time to, to embarrass ourselves, Matt. <laughs> I, I think it'll be easy for you guys, but we'll see. We'll see. Hope so. so let's take a quick break. We'll see. Mm. This episode of the Sega Lounge is sponsored by PodPage. Let me be frank, I have no web dev skills whatsoever. When I thought of bringing back the Sega Lounge as a podcast earlier this year, I started looking for a way to create a good-looking and functional website for it. I was able to find different options and even some for free, but they either were lacking in features that I wanted to have or were not directly aimed at podcast creators. That's when I heard of PodPage, which was still in its beta stages at that time. Not only was it at its inception already a great way to create and customize a podcast-centric website, but as the weeks went by, new features were added that improved upon the original concept. And the awesome part is it continues to get new features every month. Not only that, but you get top-tier customer service from the creator of PodPage himself. I highly recommend PodPage, and if you're looking for a way to create a professional podcast website, you can check it out by going to thesegalounge.com forward slash PodPage. Try it for free with your own podcast by going to thesegalounge.com forward slash pod page. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> it is time. It felt like we just, you know, took that break. Like That was quite a long break, actually. The, the power of editing. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> so it's time for the Sega Launch Challenge. Now that you know our guests, it's time to put them to the test. It's the moment we've waited for and the moment they dread. Welcome to your doom. I mean, welcome to the Sega Lounge Challenge. <laughs> What is the Sega Lodge challenge this week? Well, we have a couple of Shenmue mega fans. So it's a Shenmue related challenge. That's good to hear. <laughs> oh, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting, hang on a second. This, this could go yeah. horribly wrong. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I was going to go with something different, but then I, it, it, you know, it clicked. It could something be a quiz and reverse music. <laughs> oh. It could be anything anything I want, but it, it, it this week I want it to be the Shenmue Quotes Challenge. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So, and this, this started out as a totally different thing, but then uh, I realized it could be more interesting if uh, we had a sort of like fill in the blanks thing. Okay. Okay. So I have 10 
different Shenmue quotes. Could be Shenmue 1, Shenmue 2, Shenmue 3. Shenmue Online, no. Um, and not Shenmue Online, unfortunately. Yeah. But Shenmue 1, 2, and 3. And what I want you to, guys to do is to complete the sentences by filling in the blanks with the word or words missing. Okay. Easy enough, together. right? That That's on you. you. You decide. Yeah, let's work together, Mark. Yeah, let's work together here. Eh? I think we might need to. <laughs> Co-op is always better. Um, we both, both have, have the same quote. I think we can't go far wrong. No. Yeah, yeah. Like a wise man once said, keep friends close to you. So let's try. Let's try one for, you know, as an example. Okay. So maybe I would say, I would say, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to blank. Die is the, the answer. Okay. So this is just an example of what you can expect from this challenge. Was that a Shamu quote? <laughs> that was uh, uh, the Princess Bride quote. Okay. I was going to say, I don't remember a game that. that I've never, a, a, a film that I've never seen, but I, I know this quote. So I thought it would be an interesting one to, uh, you know, show you how this works. Okay. Fair enough. Excellent. So, James and Matt, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Let's go for it. Let's do it. No, you are not. Let's do number one, okay? So <clears throat> let's start with an easy one, okay? Okay. Oh, and by the way, if you really need it, I can give you a hint, and the hint will always be who said that sentence, okay? Okay. But only if you need it. So number one. And this one, I will not help you at all because it's so easy. Do you know any place where blank hang out? Sailors? Sailors. Agreement? So yeah, do, you know, yeah. do you know any place where sailors hang out? It has to be, doesn't it? It's got to be. Yeah. Make me Final th- answer? Make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Final answer. It's what I do. It, of course it is. Yes. Sailors is the correct answer. I thought we'd start with an easy one, okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. Number two. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. <clears throat> Shut your blank, woman. Lip. Yeah, Shut your right. lip, woman. Goro. Yeah, it's Goro, Goro, yeah. <laughs> Shut your lip, so you're saying sh- shut your lip? Yeah. Yeah. That that's an interesting answer. Are you sure? We're going with it, James. Yeah, I'm in, gr- yeah. in agreement. So not mouth or trap or no. pie hole. No. No. no lip. Specifically lip. Lip. Just the one lip. <laughs> <laughs> Just the one lip. Exactly. <laughs> your answer is. Correct. Of course. Brilliant. Awesome. Brilliant. It is so suspenseful. Yeah. I know, I know you always do this, <laughs> but it is. It does really get you. <laughs> and it doesn't help that you sound drunk, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you'll have to explain that. Okay. So uh, at, uh, at the start, the recording. At the start of the show, I was saying um, I, I listen to podcasts on two times speed. So hearing Casey's voice at normal speed, he, he sounded a little bit drunk. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That's brilliant. Am I drunk? No, that's the question. You'll never know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, (laughs) like that drunk guy from Shenmue 1 okay number 3 ready guys yep James Matt yep yes yes no don't you know that blank is way uncool blackmail blackmail yep 100% yeah blackmail very specific again very specific answer there again Mm mm-hmm that is, um, that's the, the Goro scene as well as, as when you it first is. meet Goro. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the harbour. Yeah. That's correct as well. Well done. Well done. Awesome. Awesome. These are true Shenmue fans. Okay. Let's take it up a notch. Number four. Remember that blank. Next time, it will be worse. Remember that blank. Next time, it will be worse. Mm, 
that's something I'm, I can't think. A little bit more obscure, perhaps. Is that a Shenmue 3 quote, perhaps? Because when you said that, I was thinking, like, I don't, I'm not sure if I know many from Shenmue 3. Mm. I will tell you that this is not a Shenmue 3 quote. Okay. okay. And who said it? I'm going to bite. Who said it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rio said it. Remember Can you say the quote again, please? Remember that blank. Next time, it will be worse. Ooh. Any guesses? What should we should you remember that next time will be worse? Why do I get the feeling he's beating somebody up? Oh, doesn't sound like Rio, does it? He doesn't no. sound <laughs> that kind of threatening. I my mind's a I've blank, James. A, a one-liner from Rio. Remember mm. that blank. Next time it will be worse. Next time it will be worse. God, we're showing ourselves up here, Matt, because that I can't even think where in the game that would be. And this I've, is I've a Shenmue two about hundred times. Shenmue okay. two quote. I don't know. No, I don't guess know what, what it no. would be. What, what the missing word? What word could fit this? Could fit this this sentence. Remember that pin code. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know. No, I can't think of anything there. Nothing. No. Nothing. We might have to pass on that one. Sorry. Yeah. Which do you want to like to just make something up? Could work. Beat Never know. It sounds very unreal, but beating, I don't know. What do you reckon, James? Okay. I, honestly, I can't remember that quote at all, so. Okay. Okay. I don't know who you've been so, saying it to. That's the. That's beating, the beating. Yeah, beating. Go, Go with, with it. it. Okay. Yeah. That is not the correct answer. The correct answer would be remember that pain. Next time oh, it will be worse. Okay. Remember that pain. Next time it will be worse. What part of the That's the it. game is that? I I have a list of quotes that I did a long time ago for for another thing, and I I don't remember this one either, but I I trust myself. So this is this has Rio. I have a feeling this has to do with um while he was helping that the, the old lady. I can't remember her name. Uh, in oh, the, in uh, the Antenna Apartments. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I think it it's somewhere around that part of the game. Okay. It could it be. Beats up the she's just taught you the hind blow. Is it the hind blow she teaches? Yeah, hind blow she teaches. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think he, he teaches a lesson to the to the land sharks, and mm. I think that's that's the, the part. But I can't remember exactly where. But that was I'm, a tricky question, that. Casey, that going from... One. Yeah. Even for you me, even for me. hang out to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Okay. So let's go with number five. Okay. I think this is a little bit easier. Let's see. Watch where you're going, you blank. Punk? Punk sounds right. Watch where you're going. Why? I think, is it Joy that says that as she's... It's, she's, uh, it's, when, it's on the bike, isn't it? Yeah, at the start of Shemu 2, she's just come in and she says, watch where you're going, punk. Perhaps. Yeah. That sound right, right? It sounds right in my head. I, I reckon we should go with that. So, mm -hmm. punk? Just... Final answer? Get out of the way. Yeah. Watch where um, you're going, you punk. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, final answer. That sounds right. Final answer, Punk. Yeah. This is indeed a joy quote. Okay, so watch where you're going, you punk. Very Ooh. good. Very good Ooh. job. Well done. Well done. Excellent. Excellent. Another easy one. Number six. 
Ready? Okay. Yeah. Well, number six is easy, or that last one. Number was. six. Okay. Number six is, is easy. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. An organization called Blank. Chiyo. Its its leader goes by that name. Chiyo. Yeah, Chiyo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go with that one. Who said it? Who said it? Um. Organization. Chen Wu Wan. Oh, it's uh, Master Chan. I think. Yeah, in, in the in um warehouse. in the warehouse because he said like something on the like its leader goes by that name because he recognizes mm. it, doesn't he? He goes, like, well, I know of him, him, doesn't he? The twinge in his voice. Yes. Yeah. An organization yes. known as Chi Yo. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Very yeah. good. Very good job. That's it. That's the correct answer. Excellent. Well done. Good job. Good job. Okay. I, I'm guessing, I, 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 as I'm looking at the rest of the, the quotes, the last one is a little bit tricky, but I think all of them, apart from that, are quite easy. Let's see. Number seven. Mm -hmm. Hide in the blank. Hide in the blank. Closet. Closet. Yep. With the, um, with the bird in um, Yuan's room. Yeah. <laughs> Mine, is it a minor bird? Yes. Like yes, it's a minor yeah. bird. Uh, yeah, Ran, Ran says that to to fool Donu into going into the closet. Yes. Hide in the closet, hide in the closet. In the That's closet. true. That's the correct answer. Well done. <laughs> okay. Almost there. So, so far, six out of seven. Amazing. Amazing. Good Let's stuff. go with number eight. Get up. I will allow you to die like a blank. Warrior. Warrior. Yeah, I think when we both say it, I think I, that confirms. I like a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> what if you are both wrong? Could happen. It could happen. Um, could. But that's that's pretty iconic, that line. Yeah. Too. I just hear it in my head now, actually. Get up. I will allow you to die like a warrior. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Okay. Two more. Okay. You're doing, you're doing a great job. Number nine. So she collects blanks. She's so weird. Knives. Yeah, that's right. Should have said, have said that blank, not blank. But okay. Yeah, it's, it's knives. Um, where they're tagging you on like, Rio and Ren to find out where she lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she collects knives. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. She's she's so weird. Yeah. Because she collects knives. <laughs> It's a bit weird. <laughs> it is a bit weird, yes. And it's correct. Well done. Good job. Good job. Okay. That leaves us with number 10. Quote number 10. This is the, the final one. So it's a little bit, maybe a little bit, you know, trickier. We'll see. Instead of just one word, two words. Okay. 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 You're in for a blank blank today. Ho, ho, ho. Hmm. We're in for a blank, blank, ho, ho, ho. Rough uh, ho, day. ho, ho sounds like um, you, you, you on as well, doesn't it? Yeah, or oh, you've been oh, captured oh. somewhere. Yeah. What is rough day rough, sounds like. Sounds... Rough, it sounds okay in my head. I don't know if it's right. <laughs> hmm. That is a tricky one. Any other character that says ho, ho, ho at the end? Can't think of any. No. Who said it? It's the Shenmue three quote. Oh, okay, oh. that's why. Okay, it's the Shenmue three quote uh, oh. by. Oh, it'll be uh, Niao Sun. Niao Sun. It'll be then. She says ho yeah. ho ho at the end with all the flames. Oh um, uh, no! Oh. It, it's 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 a man. Oh, it's, it's a man. Um, it's the um, big dude. It's Sun, the big dude. Sun Juicy, perhaps. I it's a, butchering the name, it's, but it, Sun. Yeah. Oh, is that the um, the Kung Fu Panda looking guy? And in... <laughs> son is a drunken master. Oh, Mister Mister Son. Okay, okay. Drunken master. Master Son. Yeah. yeah. It's rough day. I'm pretty sure it's rough day. It just rings a bell okay, in my head. You're in for a blank, blank today. Okay. Ooh. 
I'll go with Spud on that one because yeah, it just I, I might be wrong, but it just rings a bell for some reason. Is that um? That's when he's he's got his buns and yeah, and he's chasing chickens. <laughs> yeah, you're in for okay. Yeah, let's go with a rough, rough day. That could be the day where he does ten chickens and then gets some more wine and beer and then uh, wine and buns and then more chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in for a rough day today. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. Let's go with that. Final answer. Final answer. For glory. Let's go for the glory. It's Matt's glory. <laughs> yeah, no guts, no glory and all that. <laughs> this is all on you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it is indeed when uh, he is asking Rio to catch the chickens, to catch 10 chickens. And the Rio, you know, just gives them that 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 stare, that death stare. The Rio mm. stare, <laughs> yeah. right? The Rio stare. Um, and the answer is rough day. Oh, yes. Well done. yes, good job. Good job <laughs> That's pleased me way more than it should. <laughs> very good, very good. So apart from that sketchy quote yep. from Shenmue Two. Um, you, you you almost got a perfect square. Is that it's, is that what you were thinking straight away? By the way, Matt, it like just Shenmue it, three. Or... I I wasn't necessarily thinking Shenmue three, but I just thought rough day. It rung it rung a bell, and when yeah. when he said Mister Sun, I was like, it's got to be that. Just <laughs> even for well done, you won. Well uh, Very good. I could mm. I could imagine her saying that. Yeah, I could actually. Yeah. Could 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 work could work mm-hmm. yeah could work yeah that's true so that's why I said Shenmue three so to help you a little bit because you're yeah Brilliant. okay awesome so that means that means James and Matt it's my pleasure to bestow upon you the official Sega Lounge seal of approval which I'm looking forward to this <laughs> yes you'll have on Twitter in a little bit it, there you go it's one of those Keeping things there. you hear everyone get in. <laughs> And you just want to see what it looks it, like. <laughs> it indeed, it, it it is indeed a thing. Yeah, many people don't think it is a thing, but it it exists. I've just looked it's at it. There, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for for both of you. For the both of you, you guys are amazing. Well done with the Sega Launch Challenge. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you for playing. Anyway, well, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, two things mm-hmm. before we go. First, being Shenmu Dojo. So you guys are both uh, co-owners of Shenmue Dojo right now? That's correct, correct. yeah. That's correct, okay. So uh, quickly for people who maybe are not that familiar with with the Shenmue community, um, could you tell us a little bit about Shenmue Dojo and its history. Yeah, oh, wow. Luckily, just it's quite apt actually because we um we just celebrate How to do that quickly? We well yeah, that's a good question. How do we do it quickly? We just celebrated <laughs> 20 years actually on November the 14th. Um yes. which was a, a huge milestone. Um James jumping at me at any point by all means. Um it was started on November 14th the year 2000 by a man well now a man called Andy Bandos who is a name that I think would resonate across any sort of Shenmue community or anyone who's been around the dojo for the last 20 years. Um, and what started out as a little website, which was partly designed in paint, so, he's tell- so he tells me, um, has morphed into a 20-year archive of, of Shenmue media, memorabilia, discussion, you name it. It's seen a very checkered history as the dojo. Um, but it's a st- it's a staple of the Shenmue community. I think I it's think. where we all found other Shenmue fans, really. That's it's where I mm-hmm. I first went. Um, I can't remember the exact date I signed up, but I was actually looking the other day, to see if I could find like my first post. And there was a post. I think it was was it March two thousand and three. I think I said to you, Spud. Wow. Um, yeah, but that was that was like saying. Oh wow! I, I I like the new forums. So so I must have been part of the the previous forums. So I don't actually know when I signed up, but uh, I've been a part of the the Shemu Dojo since you know at least you know circa two thousand and three. Me, um, me, you know, two thousand and seven. I think something mm. along those lines. Two thousand six, two thousand seven. Can't quite remember. Yeah, and it's but it's always been the place if you you wanted to discuss Shemu and the games, the series that that is the first port of call really that's where everyone used to go and you we we hope that's where people still think of of going when they want to talk about Shenmue 
Yeah, I think mm-hmm. for us as co-owners, we we only took this over in I think it was June or July, and yep. the, the the dojo name for us it carries I think because we've been around the community for a, a long time. I think there's there's a weight of expectation around how the dojo holds itself and presents itself, and for us as co-owners, it's a, we have to sort of make sure that we live up to that dojo name in some respects. Yeah, professionalism, quality. You know, we want to hit as we, we always try and uh, be the the news source. If any new Shemu news breaks, uh, we always try and get that out to the fans as quickly as possible. So you know, we're committed to the roles, basically, aren't we, Matt? We are, and it's it's not without its challenges as well. I think we we have a good staff team behind us. That yep. if we didn't have them, I really, I think we both both be struggling. I think the co ownership. For me and Can James, give them a, a shout out, by the way, the staff. Yeah, oh, there's a lot of staff, isn't there? Where do we start? <laughs> um, so we've obviously we've got um, Lemon Hayes, who does our website and back end and all the techie stuff. He's also well yep. known in the modding community, mm-hmm. um, especially with Shenmue Three mods and other bits and pieces on Shenmue One and Two on the re-releases. Some exciting uh, things coming yeah, soon there's from some him real, as well. Real exciting stuff coming from him. Um, yep. We've got a uh, son who manages our forums along with uh, Sonoshi, who Jibby. They, they and Jibby, they manage our forums and look after our forums for us and keep things ticking along. You've got Aravel on the on our Instagram, Instagram who yeah. constantly is farming Shenmue fan art for us and looking which after that side of things, <laughs> which is good for yeah. James, as we'll come yeah. on to, I'm sure. Um, mm-hmm. And we've got Zat on the, who does the um, who does our streams every week. I think that's that's got to be everyone. We haven't missed anyone. Every Saturday. Every uh, Saturday. Um, I'm going to get shot if we've missed anyone now. Um, <laughs> oh God! I better I better make sure. Carry on talking. <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you if you miss out on someone, they will be so so salty. I probably resign on the spot. <laughs> No, no, exactly, you, exactly. You, you they will one. kill you. They will hunt you down. Yeah, we got everyone. everyone. We got everyone. Excellent. Yeah. I think yeah. Excellent. We, we do. I think we have a very good staff team behind us who mm. prop us up, who help our ideas come to life and who help drive drive the dojo forward within within what we're trying to do, which is what James says. It's it's quality, professional, Shenmue news out on the, on our social media, on our platforms, and good quality Shenmue discussion. And we like to try and remain the place that fans go when, when news breaks, that they can discuss these things. They can be open and honest with each other, respectfully, of course, because there's obviously two sides to any coin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like to think that's what the dojo stands for, what it's always stood for, and what I think we we want it to stand for going forward i think and it wouldn't be in the position it's in today without the previous owners that have been there before us i think we we were lucky to inherit inherit a very good base from peter and i think i'd be yeah, remiss if to an say amazing job but I'd be, and it'd be remiss of me mm-hmm. to say that we didn't inherit something that that was really well put together and has allowed us to really take it take it on i think is that yeah, fair to say, James? It is, yeah. And obviously, you know, the, the dojo was my first community of like-minded Shemu fans. And so, you know, there's a, a responsibility to to make sure, you know, we, we do do a good job and we, we keep that uh, the dojo alive and, and breathing for the next 20 years. That's yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that, that's exactly it at the end of the day. It's, it's Cause a it, fan- it means so much to us, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, <laughs> you know, to be there almost from its inception, and to have you know been a part of it for the last twenty years, you've, you you know you can't you can't not want to make sure that, that continues. Yeah, that there's a responsibility to it, and responsibility to yeah, the and, fan and base. The, re- the responsibility to to towards you know the Shenmue franchise itself and the community because the community is such a big part. Of what Shenmue is today, right? Absolutely. Like, especially yeah. considering Shenmue three and how uh, we we you know it took so long to have a, a third Shenmue game, but the community never let exactly. uh, it, it, hope die out and and never gave up hope and always kept that flame. It wouldn't alive, be it wouldn't so. be a thing without the community. 
and no, to be sure. and, and sure. it's all the community groups not just the dojo but all the community groups that are yeah. out there that have banded together so people like mm-hmm. phantom river stone show me forever the 500k mm-hmm. um team, show me master um team you when they were team around you, yeah. doing the tweet-a-thons i i, I it, what the, the embodiment of the Shenmue community is it came together to make Shenmue 3 happen. And yeah. mm-hmm. I like to think that the dojo was a key, key role in that and should, and should remain a key role going forward. Definitely. Yep. For sure. For sure. Agreed. Yeah. So happy 20th anniversary guys. Thank you. Happy 20th. Sure. Have you got any yeah. experience with Shenmue dojo KC? Like, I have, but only as a visitor. Right. I a I lurker. think I think at some time as a lurker, yes. I think at some point I joined the forums many many moons ago, uh, but I've never. I'm not a very social person. <laughs> I don't. I like. I I don't like people. <laughs> I don't. I I don't like talking to people. So I find that uh, unusual. <laughs> get 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 off my lawn, guys. By the way, now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> no, I I actually um I think I I've lurked there uh for several several uh, years but never actually interacted much with. I think I do have an account. Okay. I have to take a look uh and I will let you know. But I I I don't think I've ever posted maybe once or twice perhaps but not more than that. Hmm. Which is a testament to the dojo, really, that the dojo survived because, you know, you've got social media, you've got Discord, but, you yeah. know, if anything's announced, everyone's straight to the dojo and, you know, creating a topic of like 40 pages. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is still alive yeah, and well, that's which is great. good to see. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Very good. And so a good way to celebrate uh, the dojo's 20th anniversary was to release the Kickstarter for Shenmue World, right? Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, sure. Go on, James. This is your baby. <laughs> okay, so Shenmue World... Is... Go on, Daddy. <laughs> Shenmue World is um, 100% official... Unofficial, sorry. Unofficial. I, I need to clarify that. Uh, 100%... I will, I will edit that. <laughs> okay. So it becomes official. Let's no, no, no. Let's start again. Again. It's unofficial. Unofficial, unofficial yeah. So <laughs> Shenmue World, uh, 100% unofficial, fan... Uh, magazine, Shem- well, Shemu fan magazine, and um, I've been working on it for the past four or five months now. I actually surprised myself the other day. I was looking uh, through old Discord conversations, and some of the early stuff I was like talking back in August, which it feels like a life lifetime ago now. But you know, August is like three months ago. I yeah, think. I remember, I remember so, you telling me about it. Yeah, God, I've, done, I've yeah. done quite a lot to be fair in the last three or four months um that's like a lot of sleepless nights uh hard work and effort um so so basically the magazine uh i've just launched a, a kickstarter which you can go on there and back now um originally i was only actually looking for um <laughs> well it sounds stupid now but i was i was looking for, i was going to do it as a, a three thousand pound goal um, just because my main aim was, I was just passionate to create this. Um, so a little bit of a backstory, sorry. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar, Casey, with uh, phantomriverstone.com. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the the guy who does all the, the the blog, incredible blog posts on there, which is a great website for all Shemu fan. Well, I'm pretty sure they all already know about that website. Um, but uh, Switch there, I, I, I talk to him on a daily basis. And um, I've I've worked worked with him before on projects. I've I've done some guest posts on PhantomRiverStone.com, and obviously we've um, we created uh, Superpass, the the mobile app together. Yes. Um, which, just to add that into this conversation, is if anyone's not aware, um, Shemu originally came with a fourth disc, which was the the passport disc, which was like full of unnecessary content, really. But as you play through the game, if you met characters. And then put in the fourth disc and loaded your save file. You could um, connect to the the internet, the Dreamcast internet back then, and um, their character profile would suddenly appear if you you looked into it. And then that's the same. There was profiles for places. You know that that's probably <laughs> one of the crazy aspects of Shenmue is the the amount of lore and uh, backstory yeah. that every character's got. 
you know that KC point. Um, so so that passport disc, obviously the servers for that died a long time ago, and then when they released um, the Shemi One and Two collection, uh, we were a little bit disappointed actually that they'd not tried to add the passport as well. I mean, obviously I can understand why, um, but um, we wanted to try and do something to bring that back alongside the release of that. So me and Switch worked on Superpass, uh, which you can, if you're interested, you can go on superpass.com and um, there's information on how to download the app. Uh, it's a, There's an extra step if you've got a, an Apple phone, but if you're an Android user, you can just go on Google Play and type in Superpass and it's a free app. And um, we try to replicate the Shemu Passport as best as we can. There's still a lot that we want to add, but at the moment you've got the full character profiles, all 337 characters, I think, from Shemu 1. You can read the backstory of all of them. Uh, all of the, the places in the game have all got backstories, like I say. Uh, and that's probably my favorite feature of the app, the, the map section. Um, mm -hmm. There's music, the, the original playlist of the, the music that you get on the disc, um, video footage. Oh, we've got the move scrolls as well. So there's, there's even like backstory on each of Rio's moves that he learns throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've been working with Switch on that for a while. And then he mentioned to me. Let, let me just uh, interrupt you course, for a second yeah, yeah. to say I definitely recommend everyone to download Suka Pass because it's awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> definitely recommend it. Also gets the Sega launch seal of approval. Uh, is that a, and, a um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the same seal, same but seal. for the Suka Pass this time. <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day, and you could just, if you have... Uh, Shenmue 1 and 2 HD, or even if you're playing the, the old games, you could, for example, just use the maps in this app as reference, for example. Yeah, exactly. If you've never played um, the game before, it's, it's actually ideal because, uh, well, there's, there's some crazy fans who've sent us some messages saying that they're, they're using it alongside the game and they're actually, every time they speak to a character, they're actually going in the profiles on the app and saying that they've met that character because we added a button that you can you can say like you've met them in the game so the, the kind of using mm -hmm. the app like you would use it back in 1999 where you'd meet a character then you'd go on and read the profile and you know <laughs> some people um, yeah. immerse themselves in the world a bit like that so that's kind of uh, a nice nice thing to hear that people are using the app in those those kind of ways that's cool and it's it looks really, really good as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good job. Thank good you. job on that. And there are there are some uh, still to come features as well. Yeah, so I mean, more, the more reason to for people to download. Yeah, I mean, I, some of the stuff we're going to get in there, um, just just certain things that were part of the passport we've not actually um, we've w not not worked on yet. Like um, the this, there was a built in instruction manual for the game, which I know is a bit, mm -hmm. you know. Probably no one needs to to read the instruction manual for Shenmue in twenty twenty, <laughs> but it's just it's it's nice to be able to get that as a bit of a history piece of you know this is exactly how it looked back in those days, which is it's kind of mm -hmm. what we want we wanted to do from that perspective. Um, so so like I was saying, I, I've I've worked with Switch on that, and then Switch because we like I say we have a, a daily conversations. And he, he mentioned that um, someone had got in touch with him saying that he should um, turn his blog posts into, you know, a publication kind of thing. I mean, he should get them pub published um, because, you know, they're really interesting. We were kind of brainstorming, going back and forth a bit. And I was coming up with my own sort of ideas for like, you know, what, we could do like a fan magazine. And, you know, there's, there's, there's so much fan content out there, like fan art and... Um, and obviously his blog posts um so i took that on board and then i was looking into software and like how you'd go about creating a magazine so I'd, I'd i've never actually created a magazine or you know even wanted to make a magazine until now and then obviously you start getting these ideas and you start wanting to, to to see how you get on with them and i watched a few tutorials and went through tutorials on the the software that i chose to use to, to create the magazine and started getting some basic pages in there obviously i could use switches blog posts because we came up with the idea together kind of thing and um 
So I translated some of his, a couple of his posts into this first issue. And then Peter Campbell, the um, previous dojo owner, he's got an insane history piece, and he's uh, Matt on the on the. My word, yes, yeah, huge. <laughs> Honestly, it's huge. I was thinking, I'll, I'll 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 copy and paste that. I'll put that into the magazine. And that'll be nice for people to read. And then I didn't realize actually how many pages I'm like, I've done, I've done 14 pages already. And I'm only at like 2006. <laughs> Honestly, so, it's, it's like a, it's like a university dissertation. It's massive. Yeah. I'm, I'm it could sure. be a magazine on its own. Yeah. <laughs> I think he could get a, a degree or something, just sending that off to someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you're actually continuing that as well, aren't you, Matt? Yeah, I've gone up to. I'm I'm a year behind where we are currently, but I've probably written about four, probably probably a dissertation's worth again. And <laughs> I dread to I, we, I dread to think when we go through and proofread it, but that's for, that's a topic for another day, I think. Yeah. But that that's a thing with Shenmue. I mean, on on the ground of things, you think, oh, there's only been three three games. What is the t- to talk about? But there's been so much stuff over the last twenty years. And like I was saying about the fan created content, fan art, for example, mm-hmm. um, you'll get fans from all over the world. Incredible fan art. Like I don't, I, I just draw stick figures really. But they're doing like <laughs> works of art. It's it's insane. Some of the the talent that's out there, and. They'll post it on Twitter, and then obviously by the end of the day, that tweet's gone. It's it's lost to the sands of time. So, one of the the things I wanted to to try and do with Shemu World was try and get some of that fan art, um, archived, you know, and and collected so that you can open up Shemu World, go to the fan art section, and you know they're not going to get lost on Twitter. They're they're going to be there in these pages until you know the magazine disintegrates basically um so other so some of the other things i've got in there um i've um i've contacted eric calso who did the Mm -hmm. um he was the voice actor of fukusan guizang ren um for the first two games and already i've built up a, a real good relationship with eric calso he's he's a really nice guy um He's actually gone above and beyond. Um, I, I, I sent him some questions as a bit of an interview to, to put inside the magazine. And, you know, he keeps coming back with adjustments to his answers and saying, like, you know, having a look at the layout that I've done for the magazine. So he's actually he's, he's helped um, create, you know, some of the, the layout in, in the magazine because I kept trying to, to better, uh, to try and, you know, do it proud kind of thing because... Uh, he's, he's such a respected um, uh, part of Shemu for, for yeah. myself. So, um, mm. you know, so we've got a, a nice Eric Kelso interview in there, which he's, uh, he's done quite an extensive and exclusive interview for us. And he's also offered to um, sign uh, a print as well for, for every person that backs. So um, if you do go on the Kickstarter and you pick up Shemu World, you're going to get, a signed artwork from Eric Calso as well. Uh, we've got a music CD, which I'm working with uh, Rio X. He does sort of like retro 80s synth wave style music uh, that's yep. inspired from certain Shemu tracks. So we've um, we've taken 11 of his uh, pieces of uh, tracks from his first couple of um, Shen Wave EPs, which you can... Uh, I think he's got a, a band camp link where you can download these the, the music, but I, I thought it'd be awesome yeah. to get them actually on a, a professionally pressed CD, include that with the magazine. So these are so you've got the magazine, the CD, the hand signed print from Eric Calso. Uh, the cover art has been produced by Koji uh, Nakazawa, and it's one it's one of the things actually that had me really excited when I, I started making the magazine. I put that on the front cover. You know, I did the issue number one, the Shemu Dojo logo, and then the the logo I created for Shemu World, and just the front cover alone had me excited. So um, I wanted <laughs> to to give that as an unedited A3 poster as well. So that's going to be included, mm. and um, we've got a set of four Guilin postcards. Um, there's a there's a section of the magazine where I've I've kind of like blown up some uh, some screenshots that I've personally taken. Uh, of Guilin. It's one of my favourite sections in the whole of the game. Uh, Shemu 2's Guilin, especially. 
just that journey, that last two hour journey of the game is it's, it's beyond words. It's, it's something it's, else. It is incredible. Yeah. It is incredible. It's probably you know, it's my gaming highlight of my life, basically. That just that two hour chunk just <laughs> that that's another topic <laughs> in itself, really. And awesome. um and then obviously if you're back, I'm gonna put print your name inside the the middle the middle spread it's going to have everyone's name mm-hmm. the backs in there and like i say originally i, I was i was doing it uh at three three thousand pound goal is what i planned but then i didn't realize that kickstarter take into account shipping fees so switch came out with the uh, the calculations that if i was to just make the goal of three thousand pound with say a hundred Backers from America, two thousand pound the way yeah. it's going to ship in, and then Kickstarter is <laughs> going to take three hundred pound off me. So I'm left with seven hundred pound to create, you know, nearly three thousand pounds worth of goods. So that was a bit of a risk <laughs> for myself. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to incorporate the the shipping costs into the total goal, which is why it was set at six thousand five hundred. And obviously, um, I've got full transparency on there with the pie charts. And I've I've shown all screenshots of how much stuff's actually going to cost to to produce, so that was where I got the six thousand five hundred goal from. And then since then, it's actually been smashed. Yeah, the community yeah. community yes. really came out for it. I mean, I, I I was honestly I was I in was a day, worried. right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was literally twenty six hours, I think. Yeah, it was. It was. I'd, honestly, I, I'm overwhelmed with the support because I'd, I'd, I'd I was thinking. <laughs> It, it sounds funny now, but I was saying to switch like I, I don't, I you know, it's, it sounds too high to me. Six thousand five hundred. It's because I'm not that confident of a guy in like my abilities, and I'm, I'm I'm looking for the magazine. I'm like, oh, you know, I hope I hope it's good enough because um, I don't want to let anyone down. Um, but uh, obviously, I, you know. I can, yeah, it, it's it's a big responsibility as well. It, yeah, yeah. I, and I, and I truly realise how I understand. the Kickstarter page took you know a few days worth of preparation and planning just to produce. It was quite a a project in itself just to make the the, the project page. Mm-hmm. And I think and you, you get a real uh, appreciation of like what the Shemu Three Kickstarter actually went through, and you know it gets gets a bit of a bad rep. But really, that first night when all the the messages were flooding in, all the the people were, were giving me support and I was I was trying my best to keep up and I wanted to thank everyone personally and it was so overwhelming that I was thinking you know crikey my, my goal is 6,000 Shenmue's was 6.5 million if you know what I mean and <laughs> with that amount of backers uh, I'm just currently looking at it now we've got just over 400 backers but you know Shemu ended with yep. 65k backers or whatever and just to be, be able to take all these messages you're flooding in, I, I can't even imagine how crazy of a job that would have been for the, and, for the team. And that's on top, with, with all due respects as well, to the fact that you work. We, you know, we have full-time jobs. Yeah, and you've been, you've been working on this magazine you know, in your free time, in, uh, late, night, late into the night in, in, in some instances. And I think, I think the reason, and I might be talking out of turn a little bit here because I'm biased, but I think the reason it smashed its goal is is because it's very, very clear that there's a passion that's gone into it and it's made with the love and dedication that, that the Shemu community respond to. And I think that's why mm. it's absolutely smashed its goal um, because this is, this is I take no credit for it. This is solely James's pro- uh, project. The only involvement I've had with it is some discussions on our Discord group here or there about just checking formats, making sure things worked okay. This is solely yeah. James's project. Like, what do you think of this page, etc.? Yeah. yeah, and yeah, it, it, you know, Matt, you can it, it's it's smashed it smashed its goal, so you can now take some responsibilities uh, right, if you right. want. Just sit back and relax. It's not gonna, it's not, it's not gonna bomb or anything, so you can you can. Feel free to. Yeah. But I th- you can say your baby too if you but want. I, to. I, no one knows. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in all, yeah, in all seriousness, it, it, I think it, it, the quality of the product speaks volumes with the quality of the effort that's gone into it. It's not some five-minute job. This is months and months of work that James has James has put into this, and and it and it shows. And I think when people get this magazine in their hands, and I, I haven't had it in my hands myself yet, but I have seen a physical copy because James has got one 
it's a real weighty, good quality product that yeah. I think does the Shemu community it, it's, proud. It's, it's a really, really thick boy, right? Yeah, I, I mean, like I'm just, just I was looking. And it, it looks great. Just looking at the pictures, it look, looks really high quality. Thank as you. Well. Yeah, I mean, when I had it printed, I had like a, a set sort of specification for what I wanted it to be printed as, and it really su surpassed my expectations. Really, when it arrived. Because this this test print alone, I think it cost me about fifty pound, but it's worth every penny to me because just feeling something I've produced in my own hands, you know, this is it's surreal. Really, uh, I'm flicking through it right mm. now, actually. Looking, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, there's there's some some cool stuff in there that I, I hope really resonates with fans. Um, I managed to speak to Ed Lomas, who used to be, um, I, f I think he's the chief. He was the chief. Oh, deputy. Uh, chief editor on the official Dreamcast magazine, and it's 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 mm -hmm. crazy, really. I've I've reached out to all these people, and I've never really had a no in response. Like I I, I wasn't expecting to get anywhere with Ed, Ed Lomas, but I'd, I messaged him just out the blue and just said, um, "I'm I'm working on the Shemu fan magazine, and uh, I've had an idea of reprinting your very first uh, Shemu article from." issue one of the official Dreamcast magazine, would that be okay? And he didn't just agree to it. He even gave me, uh, you know, a, a brief memory of his, his time meeting Yu Suzuki of, you know, the day he did this interview. Um, so so I've, I've put that inside the magazine as well, which is, is very interesting. And um, he said, just make sure with Danish publish, Publishing, who did the, the magazine originally, that it's okay as well. And, you know, I messaged a magazine company saying, you know, I'm, I'm producing this Shenmue fan magazine. Would it be okay to, to reprint an old article? And he said, yeah. It's, you know, I've I've been really surprised by how, because um, obviously no one really knows who I am and I'm reaching out to people like Eric Kelso and just saying like, C can I do an interview for a magazine? And, you know, everyone's gone above and beyond. It's been really good because uh, for issue one, I was trying to reach out to, to people myself like close friends, and um, I was I tried to keep the magazine kind of a secret. So I've been just messaging people's work that I really I liked liked at the time, kind of thing, like some Japanese fan art. Some of the Japanese fans, you know, create some incredible pieces of work. So I've reached out to them. I've tried to speak in Japanese to them as well, and everyone's agreed. It's been it's been really refreshing. And then my plan going forth was for issue two, people. Uh, will come to me instead kind of thing because now it's it's not a secret anymore and you know if, if people want to get inside the magazine they only have to message me uh, we've set up a Shemu World forum on the Shemu Dojo forums so if you've got a piece of fan art or you've written a piece about Shemu um, these, these people that do poems Shemu poetry I've seen um, that would be pretty cool to get a, a Shemu poem written by someone inside the magazine um, so anything like that, um, if you've if you've created something for Shemu, just get in touch, and I'll see if I can incorporate it into a future issue. Um, doesn't matter Excellent. what fan base you're from; you don't have to be a Shemu Dojo fan. If you come from Shemu 500K, or you're a fan of just just the series in general, and you hear this, mm -hmm. you know, and you've got something that you you think you know that would be cool to see printed out, um, get in touch. Yeah. We'll we'll include a link. In the description, in the voice, uh, the show notes, sorry, Brilliant. of the podcast, so people can access it easily. Then, so that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So, if you have anything mm. Shenmue related, any fan works, Ex exactly. get in touch, get in yeah. touch. With, we'll, with the Shenmue Dojo. Yeah, we yeah. don't want to be, yeah, we don't want to leave anyone out if possible. I mean, obviously, there's only so much I can do to fit in a magazine. This this first issue is 164 pages. And that's why it looks so chunky because you know it is quite a chunky. It's it's on the verge of a book really, <laughs> than a magazine. <laughs> but uh, it's got that magazine format, which is it's nice. It's um, you know it's not, uh, you know it's it's not a book format. There's there's articles in there, mm. and then the next page I've I've done a couple of like um, I've got a section called the Puzzle Dojo where I've done a word search and a crossword. So it's it's got like. Just, <laughs> just some fun, fun elements that I think there should be something in the magazine for everyone, really. If you're a Shemmy fan, yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. 
And y the plan is to uh, make this uh, biannual thing. Right? I hope so. so there yeah, should be two issues every year. If that is is all being well, I mean, I've got a lot of other life commitments, so I can't promise that it's going to be every six months. But that was a goal um, of mine. I was thinking like a year seems a bit too long, so every six months. But then again, you know how how fast time flies. Um, these days, as we're getting older and older, uh, six months is like it's a blink, you know, isn't it? It's a blink of an eye. Blink, yeah. But that is yeah. that is my aim. I'd, I'd like. Otherwise, it's going to be like a, a Christmas release every every time, and I'd, I'd I haven't actually put anything Christmas related in the magazine just because I don't want it to be. If it ends up being a yearly thing, having that sort of oh, it's Christmas again. I'm going to have to put something Christmassy in it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what my thinking was. Every six months, at least it's. One halfway through the year and one at the end of the year, but we'll see. We'll mm. see if that actually. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, Casey, but on the spine, uh, I had an idea from um, Retro Gamer magazine, and um, uh, another friend of mine called Scribe. He, he mentioned doing something where you split the spines up so that when you've got them all on your shelf as a collection, it creates. Oh. A, yeah. So if you if part uh part way down on the kickstarter page i show the spine and you can see there's like half of half of an s just <laughs> briefly showing on the on the spine there so hopefully once if this does become a, a series once they're all okay. laid on the shelf it should it should look pretty cool i think because i know shemu fans love to collect things and me, me <laughs> yeah personally, if this was like flipped and i was back in this you know it's stuff like that that's really exciting for Shemmy fun. Excellent. Excellent. Cool, cool. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. And people will find the link to the Kickstarter page in, in the, the show notes as well. Yeah. Uh, and people should definitely check it out. Check it out. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Guys, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, it's it's great to see that the, the Kickstarter is going so well, that Shenmu Dojo is going well as well. 20 years strong. 20 years young. Yep, he's still yeah. right. <laughs> um any any last words for people listening in who you know either people who are Shenmue fans and me, maybe people who are you know just tired of listening to me talk about Shenmue <laughs> all the time and would you like to tell them something to I explain why they should definitely try Shenmue <laughs> try Shenmue well I mean if you can if you've listened through however long this podcast has been just three people talk about Shemu super passionately. Um, I think that just proves how great of a series it is. Um, that just those t you know those ten random quotes. <laughs> you're, you're so ingrained in the world of Shemu that you know you you can finish the end of someone's sentence kind of thing. Um, I just think that the series really does um, take you to, to places that you've you've never been before. Um, I think it stands on its own. I don't think there's a, another game series that's any anywhere near to it. I know people compare it to Yakuza, but it's it definitely isn't. It's its own thing. It's not the same yeah. thing. There's yeah. there's no other game game like it. And um, even though it paved the way for open world games, I think Shenmue is the definitive open world game, and nothing's ever come close. And just the the characters, the story, the gameplay. Um, if you can really get into it and you really allow yourself to be immersed, I think you'll become a fan like us talking yeah. about the game in 20 years' time and hoping that you'll get a Shemu 4, Shemu 5, 6, 7, however many Yu Suzuki wants to do. Uh, we'll still be here, won't we? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> we'll still be here. And I think James has summed it up. If you, what, if you want to let yourself in for a fully immersive package, you're in the right place. And if you let it take just take a little place in your heart it will consume you and that game will become something else it, honestly it will capture the imagination if you just give it an inch and that's all you need to do with Shenmue give it an inch and I promise you that you'll be in for an experience that you'll never forget in gaming well said well said <laughs> here here <laughs> excellent so one last thing left Okay. It's the question that I ask everyone. It's about blast processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I, I take it you are familiar with blast processing and you are familiar with the question as well. That's correct. Yeah. So that 
that thing that Mega Drive, <laughs> that the Mega Drive or the Genesis uh, uh, supposedly have had to, uh, you know, be superior to the competition. So if you guys could add any or blast processing to anything in the world, what would it be and why? Um, I would add it to, and I've thought about this in advance because I knew this question was going to come up, but I'd add it to uh, <laughs> Yu Suzuki's wallet just so that every time he looks, <laughs> it's an endless <laughs> supply of money. <laughs> I think um, I think if his wallet had blast proce- processing, we probably will still never see a Shenmue 4 just because he'd be working on it for the next 20 years. And um, <laughs> I think that's that's the case with Yu Suzuki. Um, he needs someone to tell him to stop, but uh, that's what I'd, I'd, I'd give Blast Pross into his, his wallet, just so uh, Shemu 4 is a, a go. <laughs> okay, and good answer. For me, I would give it to the 90s, noughties retro revival in games. Um, for me, it's such a fond period of my gaming history, and I just love new gamers to experience the, the feelings, the passion, the games that we did, the color, the arcades, all of that together, I, I would put that into the, the, the into the nineties, noughties gaming retro revival, and really present that to new gamers as a as a this is where it's come from. This is why we're so passionate about what we do. Excellent answer as well. That's amazing. That's that's great. That's great. Awesome. And I I, I disagree with the the Yu Suzuki wallet thing because you need to add blast processing to whoever is uh, making him stop and release the games. <laughs> that, that's the person who needs blast processing. Yep. No. New Sun, stop. No, it's good. It's okay. <laughs> just just release it to the public. Let's let's work on five and six then. That's true. That is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't give him not don't give him uh, endless supplies of money. Please. <laughs> he buy a couple of <laughs> more Ferraris. Um, you know, <laughs> he'll, he'll t- take you know travel to a, a few other villages in China. Think about uh, a few more things to add to Shenmue. Definitely, for, yeah, yeah, he would, and will never have the game. <laughs> okay, James Brown, Matt Oliver, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been a real pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. Oh, um, thanks for I'm, having us. I don't know why it took me so long to get. Uh, representatives of the Shenmue Dojo on the show, but I'm glad that you guys, um, you know, joined me today. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, it's been brilliant. Hopefully, we, we can we can talk again in the future. Yeah, yeah, and, and absolutely. You, you want to promote anything? Talk about Shenmue. I'm I'm game. So yeah, come back soon. Super. Please. We'd, no, we'd, yeah, we'd love to. Sign sighting things in the works haven't we spud so yeah there's some there's some bits and pieces that I'm working on at the moment, which will hopefully come to the fore Ooh. in the next month or two so keep keep your eyes peeled everyone there's some i'm talking to some um prevalent people in the shemu community at the moment about some things so Ooh. just just fingers crossed i don't want to overhype it but there's some good things coming <laughs> and and stay to whatever you're doing just keep it up and let's try and get yeah. shemu four. we'll we'll get it's there possible. let's just stay stay together everybody and we will get shenmu four. yep okay thank you guys thank you, thank you very Thanks, much Casey. cheers Many thanks to James and Matt for coming on the show this week. The fact that James has been a regular listener of the show since its live radio show days really warms my heart. If you're a fan of the Shenmue series, be sure to check out the Kickstarter page for Shenmue World. And don't forget Suka Pass. It's such a beautiful little thing you can get on your devices and really brings back the feeling of wonder you got with the original Shenmue Passport disc back in the days of Shenmue 1. All the links, as usual, will be in the show notes. And, of course, happy 20th anniversary to the Shenmue Dojo community. I am finally in a position where I can announce the plans for the rest of the current season of the show. If all goes well, we've got three more episodes coming, and all of them with brilliant guests. After that, I'll take what I think is a much-deserved break and hopefully come back in 2021 with Season 6. 
I am also now looking for feedback from you guys, my amazing listeners. Thoughts on this new podcast format we adopted for season 5? Suggestions for next season? Types of episodes you'd like to see other than the regular interview format? The official Sega Lounge email address, podcast at thesegalounge.com, is open and so is the voicemail feature on our website, thesegalounge.com. Drop me a line or a voicemail and I'll carefully consider your suggestions. With all that out of the way, it's time to close the doors of the lounge for another week. Remember to stay safe and to take care of your health, physical or mental. Play games, have fun, and I'll be back next week. Bye bye The Sega Lounge. Hosted by me, KC, and part of Radio Sega's network of live shows and podcasts. Theme song and incidental music by OSC. Find them at opusciencecollective.bandcamp.com. Got any suggestions? Drop me an email to podcast at thesegalounge.com. Follow us on Twitter at The Sega Lounge and like us at facebook.com slash The Sega Lounge. You can find previous episodes of the show by going to thesegalounge.com and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded.